What is up, my people? I'm in the house. You are in the house. This is Arnold, aka Vitamina, and it's time for some balancing talk. Uh, Matthias Kleiner, he asked me the question about balance and the jinga, like whether he should move more on the front foot, more on the back foot, and how to deal with that. And I answered him already. You can uh, check it out. It's on the main page. Um, but but I wanted to go a bit by session with you guys because I think balance in capoeira is one of my favorite principles that I apply to different situations, right? And depending on what you want, which technique, uh, the moment in the game, where are you, what would you like to do after, um, this all relates where to put your weight and where to find your balance, right? So the main, the main thing is to always aim for balance, but also to um, move the balance away, transition, and find balance somewhere else. So let's say if I have a sequence, right? I want to do, um, let's say something easy. Um, uh, hole, bananera. Well, that's just that. Hole from carrera to bananera, right? Then if I want to have a balanced bananera, first I have to have a balanced hole. And more importantly, the, the transition moment in between should be perfectly balanced because that will make or break the the sequencia. So it's a balanced hole, right? Jinga, hole, and then prepare for the transition move. And then feel the transition move, the start of it, then do it, feel the end of it, and that is the start of your bananera. So in that way you start balanced. And and I think that is that is the key. So uh, coming back to uh, coming back to Matthias to your question, um, his question was, should I have like uh, one third on my front foot or two third on my back foot, and or well, or the other way around? I think aim for balance in a neutral position, and you don't do anything besides one technique. Let's say you only do jinga, right? Then you just want to have a balanced jinga, uh, so 50-50, I would say. But then you have to choose um, how to divide your weight uh, depending on what you want to do next, right? If I, let's say, I want to do uh, armada and I, I start with a cross step. So you, you, this is your jinga and you step, step like this, right? And then you turn. Well, then you step. You have a transition, so you go out of your balance 50-50% jinga, but then that transition move of having your legs crossed, you're like, I, I like this. This is kind of cool. I cannot make the armada, but I have the idea here. So this should be balanced. And before I can lift my, my leg, I should shift my weight to one, one leg, the standing leg, so I can let go of the other leg. So. It's really about transition and finding, starting from balance, transition, and balance again. And if you do that, if you also apply that to the jinga, you'll, you'll get, you get massive results. You know what I do to balance my jinga? I consciously go out of balance. Um, I go out of balance and um, find my balance. So I try to find my balance while being out of balance and that's deep but that's i think that's that's a level higher than just just uh, or let's say more advanced to ju just compared to just the um jinga right because if i if i can fall if i break my body i don't know if i can do it here let me let, let me try an example yeah i let go of the mic but i have some space here so if I would fall here, I would fall, and then I would catch myself, right? So I would consciously out of balance, but then rebalance, and then move. So for me, that's that's one of my favorite. Um, could you see it? <laughs> Let me know if you could. Um, 
So that's that's one of my favorite uh, tricks, basically, to use within my Jenga flow, to um, to to fake I am out of balance, but I know I will refine my balance and from there attack, right? So yeah, I think I think that's um, that's the key. That's the key of of uh, um, your Jenga question, Matthias. Uh, just 50-50 and according to the situation you adapt. So, but but it always is related to a technique. And the discussion of of no, you should have a jinga like this because this la 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 la. No, you should always do it like this la 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 la. I think it's bullshit because it depends, you know. And of course, it's it's um, when. Yeah, some people claim, you know, you have to do it like this because this is wrong and da 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 da. It sounds nice, right? It 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 sounds nice, but for me, it's most of the time, it's it, it's um, yeah, it's a, it's a superficial, superficial answer because it always depends whether you should hold your jinga arm here or here. It depends. It's a style thing. It's a it's uh, how your shoulder works. Maybe you have a bad shoulder. How quick you are. If you are close by. If you are far away. Mm, and also this relates to the foot. Another favorite discussion is uh, to go on uh, to do a negativa like the regular one um, on the ball of your foot or the flat foot. Well, the Haitian now contemporaneous say no, you can't do the flat foot because la 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 la. I say well, it depends. It depends on your body first of all. It depends how much you have trained it, and it depends on which moves you like and how you would like to play your game. And I think if you have trained a certain move uh, long enough, so you feel it. Like I, I noticed that w w when I had a flat foot in my negativa, I did that because I, I then didn't feel my uh, knees so so much because I had bad knees back then. Um, so yeah, I, I I just chose it for that reason, and I like a difference, you know. I I like to to have a difference in my game as well. Um, but it felt so good, and I did it so often that I became fast also on the floor with that position. So you know, it it and it fits my body because I have long arms, long uh, legs, you know, tiny uh, tiny uh, uh, upper body. So. Lengthwise, very strong. So um, yeah, it depends, man. That's I think that's that's the main the main thing. So do you have a question, a person who is uh, who's online? I can't I can't see your um, I can't see your name, so I can't I cannot mention your name. Or can I? Do you know where to find that? Deal names. Cup of flow. I don't know. Or is that me? That would be nice. Talk to myself. No, but that's fine because you you see it later, right? Um, yeah. Let Let's end this. This This is clear, right? The balance principle. I have I have like five, six, seven, eight principles that 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 I apply in my training and my my uh, method, a cup training and teaching. So if you like to, if you want to know more. I think this for me is a really easy way and, and practical way to give you a lot of information uh, within limited time, right? Because I can write books about one principle, have really example, like, you know, it's it's quite massive. Cause you, but if you work with principles, you can really improve your game. Like, honestly, your spinning principle, balance principle, uh, the opposite principle, just to name a few, yeah? Let me know what you want to hear. Um, thanks for watching. Love you. Muito. Ha. Ha ha. And then you should say, I love you back. Well, you know, it's, a, it's quite personal. You don't, you don't have to. My name is Arnold, a.k.a. Vitamina Vita. Uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't. And uh, have a great time, whatever you do. Yes, see you later. Ciao.